Hey guys, so today's video is gonna be a haul video. Um, I don't usually like doing haul videos, as I've said, I kind of find them a little bit self-indulgent sometimes. I, I, I still feel it's kind of like, look what I bought. But I went to Westfield Shopping Centre in London, which I don't go to that often, and I got... I got a few things. Um, mostly books, but I figured I would just show you what I bought, in case you cared, so... Not very good at this thing, am I? Firstly, I went into Forever 21. I didn't actually get that much because I always end up buying loads when I get into Forever 21. Um, but these are absolutely lovely. The first thing I got were these, um, like, sweatpants. Can't get them right around. These sweatpants are just gorgeous. I just love the print of them. Um, I haven't gone out in them, believe it or not. Um, they're just for lounging around the house with, and I just think they look absolutely just lovely. I've pretty much been living in these since I bought them because they're so soft and they're so comfy. I think they were about £15. Um, I don't know because obviously I've taken the label off so it doesn't itch my butt. But if you see these, I mean, how often do you see sweatpants with just palm trees and stuff on? So it reminded me of the summer and going to America. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna get them and feel sad in the cold winter of the UK. And the only other thing I got from Forever 21, um, because I restrained myself a little bit, um, was this black and white shirt. It's kind of a little bit tight. Um, it's ribbed, I don't know if you can see the pattern, but it is ribbed down there. Um, going all the way down and it's got a white collar and white sleeves. And I just, I thought it was lovely. I, I think it's one of those things you can just wear, um, when you want to feel a bit comfy. And also, like, you could probably go to a meeting in this and you'd probably look pretty professional, so... So I like it, I think it's cute, um, but obviously it's subjective, I suppose. It's a knit top, apparently, and it's £18. Um, this is the small. Um, most things that I buy are small. I don't get extra small or anything. I'm usually a size 8 on top and bottom. Sometimes I'm a 10 on the bottom, depends on how many Pringles I've been eating. Um, but anything that I wear is usually a small, in case you were wondering. This is 100% acrylic, apparently. I haven't worn it yet. Um, but it feels quite soft. Um, it's not incredibly soft, but to be honest with you, it's good enough. I, I'm really not that fussy. Next up, I went into Lush, and actually, believe it or not, they had their Easter range out, but I'm trying to stop spending so much in Lush, because I spend a ridiculous amount, and I only bought two things. Firstly, I got this. This is the carrot soap. Um, which is part of their Easter range. They had this last year, and I didn't really like it. I didn't really like the smell of it. I was like, Ew. And then I did a snowman jelly for last year's Christmas range, um, and I, I love the smell of it, and I realised that they're exactly the same smell, so I guess it just grew on me. Not too sure. It's quite a big block. Um, this block costs £6.95. Their soaps are very expensive, um, and if you're buying them hoping for a good lather, you're gonna waste your money, because these are very natural, and most natural soaps don't lather up that much. They don't have that much um, sodium lauryl sulfate in them. Um, it smells absolutely... I can't even describe the smell of it. I want to say it's like carrots, but I usually hate carrots. I can't eat carrots. I think they're disgusting, but I love the smell of this, so... If I like it, you'll like it. The other thing I got was another block of soap, and this is actually for my dad, because I've managed to convince him that Lush is nice, and he went around smelling the soaps, bless him, and he said this was his favourite smelling one, so I bought him a block. This is the Miranda soap. Now, if I remember correctly, this is quite citrusy. It's not that citrusy. I was completely wrong. But the fact is, my dad really likes it, so I got it for him. Um, this block costs £7.96, just for that. Nearly £8 for that block, so that's why I'm trying to cut down on Lush stuff now, because I'm trying to save up to get my own house eventually, and if I keep buying all this Lush stuff, that's not going to happen. There will still be like occasional Lush hauls and stuff on this channel if I get a bit excited when I'm in Lush, but um, there'll probably, probably be less. Um, than there have been. So next up I went into a store called Kath Kidston. If you don't have a Kath Kidston near you, it's basically a posh store full of purses for middle-aged ladies. Um, but if you're like me, a middle-aged lady, then you will like that store. I went in there because a couple of days before I'd gone in and I'd seen this purse that I really liked, which is this one, and it has got so much card space, it's unreal. Like, I'm gonna count how many card slots there are in this, because I have so many cards, and I've never seen a purse have this many slots. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then, you come to the zip pocket, and there's more! So you're looking at around 26 card slots 
in this purse and I just think that's amazing because most purses I've ever had always had like five slots and you have to put like three cards in each slot and then you're losing all your cards and you're holding everyone up at the till and hashtag relatable stuff. So you have a little slot on the back, um, I assume that's where you dump receipts because that's that's something I would do. And in the zip pocket, not only do you have all these card slots, you have a big slot there for notes, you have another slot there for notes. I think actually I might have counted the amount of card slots wrong, I think there's only 24, but that's still a hell of a lot of card slots. Also in the zip area, there is another zip area, which is what I assume is for coins. Another little one there, looks a bit like a flowery vagina. Why would I say that? And then in the main area, like I said, you have all these slots for extra notes and receipts and things like that. So basically, it's it's got a lot of storage in it. The downside is the price of this. This purse, this plastic, non-leather, kind of fabric-y thing, £38. And that's a lot for a purse. I have never paid so much for a purse. Um, the only reason I did is because I know this is going to last me a long time and I really needed the card space, but I just wish that was cheaper because I, I do think that is a rip-off. Um, I know that Kath Kitten is kind of designer, but for a purse? Come on! So then I went into Topshop and I only bought one thing, which is like a record for me. I'm doing good with the cutting down on spending says the person who went to Westfield to buy things. I bought a phone case, which sounds really anticlimactic. Um, this is by Skinny Dip, and it's for the iPhone 6, and there are no nice cases in stores for iPhone 6s, none at all. I usually get cases from Paper Chase, but they are just letting me down on the iPhone 6 front. There are just none, none that I like. They're all just really rubbish designs. I saw this, it's clear, it's got pineapples on it, it's gold, and I just, I fell in love with it and I've been waiting to make this video so that I can put this on my phone. Ooh, there we go. I like it. I think it looks cool. Obviously it's a much harder case now, um, so I don't know if that's gonna be good when I drop my phone because I always drop my phone. It's good because all of the bottom is uncovered, um, unlike on this one where it was all sort of like cut out holes. Although this is already cracked. I know you can't see it, but like on the side, like near my volume keys, the plastic has already snapped in two. Um, and now it was like that before I got it out of the packet, so that's not good. And finally we move on to my favourite store in Westfield. Foils the Bookshop. Yeah, I bought a lot of books because some were three for two, and I also have this really weird interest in something which I will talk about in a second, and I have to buy every book to do with it. It's, it's weird, I'm just preparing you for that. So in this bag I have three books. The three I have in this bag are all young adult fiction. Um, the first one is called Juvie and it's by Steve Watkins. I want to say I haven't read any of these yet, obviously. They're still waiting in the bags, waiting to be read until I've made this video. I'm just going to read the bit on the back for every book that I've bought so you guys know what it's supposed to be about. Sadie has always been the responsible one, not like her older sister Carla. Caught up in a drug deal, wrong place, wrong time, Sadie has to take the blame to keep Carla out of jail. Sadie was supposed to get community service, instead she is sentenced to six months in juvie. She has sacrificed everything for her sister. Can Sadie find the strength to forgive her too? So I guess it's like a sisterly relationship as well as um, a young girl going through uh, juvie, which is obviously prison for young adults. Um, it kind of reminded me of Orange is the New Black, the cover just kind of reminded me of it and I just I just think it's going to be really good because if you love Orange is the New Black you're already kind of into the whole prison drama thing so I think if you've if you've if you've watched that I think it would be quite easy to get into next up is a book that I hadn't heard of until I saw that Carrie um, had read it via her Goodreads um, if you don't already know I have a Goodreads account I do already have like the maximum friend limit or something I don't know why they limit to 5000 friends um, but you can find it at goodreads.com forward slash Emma Blacker if you want to find out all the books that I've read this year. I am going to make a video on all the books that I've read this year, uh, so far. Don't know when I'm going to make it, but I will make it. So I found out that Carrie had read a book called Trouble by Non Pratt, um, which is the most unfortunate name in the world. Hannah is smart and funny. She's also 15 and pregnant. Aaron is a new boy at school. He doesn't want to attract attention. So why does Aaron offer to be the pretend dad to Hannah's unborn baby? Yeah. Trouble. But without looking at any other reviews, I just jumped in and trusted Carrie's judgement because I trust Carrie a lot when it comes to books. And she said it was a really, really good book. Uh, she's mentioned it in videos and stuff, so I'm gonna give that a good read. And you can see it on Goodreads. I, I'm gonna stop. And then I picked up a book by someone that I'm slowly considering my friend because we follow each other on Twitter. 
and we all know that, that mutual following means that you're friends. This is Soulmates by Holly Bourne. I believe that Holly is going to be turning this into a movie, so Holly, hit me up. I wasn't in Paper Towns, but I came like this close. I didn't really, I didn't even get an audition. <sighs> I recently read a book by Holly called The Manifesto on How to Be Interesting, and it's still like my favourite book that I've read this year. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I would recommend that you look it up and just pick it up and bite and read it and just love it, because you will. Um, and it's just, it's just wonderful. It's a young adult book, but I'm just totally into it. Anyway, soulmates. Um, soulmates do exist, but not as you think. Every so often, two people are born who are the perfect match for one another. Soulmates. But what if meeting your soulmate is earth-shattering, literally? An epic, electrifying and extraordinary debut about falling in love. So I guess this is Holly's first book. Um, so that's going to be interesting to read. If this writing is anywhere near as good as the writing in the manifesto on how to be interesting, this is going to be a fantastic book. I think this is probably going to be the next book that I read um, after I've finished A Clockwork Orange, which is what I'm reading now, which is the most ridiculous book to read, but I'll talk about that in another video, because my god, my head is just fried from that. But I think this is going to be the next book that I read, so I'm... Holly's beating me up. And the second bag, which is the last bag in this video. Firstly, um, they had a table in foils which had loads of books for three for two. Um, obviously, you're not stupid, you know what a three for two means, and I was about to explain it. The first book that I picked up was Suffragette My Own Story by Emmeline Pankhurst. Um, the reason that I really want to read this is because I am quite ashamed that I don't know enough about the suffragettes. Emmeline Pankhurst was a British political activist and leader of the suffragette movement. In 1903, she founded the Women's Social and Political Union. She died on 14th of June 1928, only weeks before the Conservative government extended the vote to all women over 21 years of age. Um, this is her story, um, in her own words, and it's now a major motion picture. Great. Well done, you've, you've managed to push the women's vote into a Hollywood movie. Either way, quite frankly, I don't know enough about it and I wanted to find out more about it, so... Looked good. The second book that I picked up was The National's Guide to Life and Earth by Chris Hadfield. Chris Hadfield spent decades training as an astronaut and has logged nearly 4,000 hours in space. During this time, he has broken into a space station with a Swiss army knife, disposed of a live snake while piloting a plane, and been temporarily blinded while clinging to the exterior of an orbiting spacecraft. The secret to his success and survival is an unconventional philosophy he learned at NASA. Prepare for the worst and enjoy every moment of it. So this is basically advice from someone who has been in space. Um, advice about life and how you should enjoy it and it just looked incredible. And the third book in my three for two was this and this has been on my wanting to read list for so long um, well, not so long, I mean it only came out a little while ago but ever since I found out about it I've wanted to read it. It's called Look Who's Back by Timur Verm... I don't know because the sticker's over his name. Timur Verm is, is his name. As far as I know um, in fact, I'm just going to read this blurb to you because um, I'm sure you can tell who this is about. Berlin, summer 2011. Adolf Hitler wakes up on a patch of open ground, alive and well. Things have changed. No Eva Braun, no Nazi party, no war. Hitler barely recognises his beloved fatherland filled with immigrants and run by a woman. Oh god. And he's furious, as in like Fuhrer. That's bad. Don't make a pun out of... Nazis. People certainly recognise him, albeit as a flawless impersonator who refuses to break character. The unthinkable, the inevitable happens, and the ranting Hitler goes viral, becomes a YouTube star, gets his own TV show, and people begin to listen. But the Fuhrer has another programme with even greater ambition, to set the country he finds a shambles back to rights. So, Hitler becomes a reality TV star, and wants to bring Nazi Germany back. I wish I'd come up with that because I've never heard anything so ridiculous and so tempting to read. And now we move on to the final three books that I got and the end of the haul, um, which leads me on to the weird part where I tell you about something that I'm really heavily into, um, like fascinated by, not, not interested in like a good way because you'll find out it's a bad thing. I am really, really interested in the regime in North Korea. I'll give you a minute. I'll give that a minute to sink in. Since I found a YouTube video of a North Korean defector, which is someone who has fled the country, ever since I watched a video of her talking about her experiences with North Korea and how horrible it is to live there, I started looking into websites like Amnesty International and started finding out other things about North Korea, which I didn't even know about. So many people don't know what is going on in North Korea. 
Um, I found out about prison camps and starvation, just mass propaganda throughout the country. And it's just so hard to believe that that country exists and it's not just this made up horror story that I have t I've taken it upon myself to read every single book about North Korea that I could find. I think so far I've read three. I've got another couple that I haven't started and I just bought another three. Um, I'm just, I'm just really fascinated by the fact that such a horrible regime can exist. That's what I meant by being intrigued and interested in it. Not like, wow, it sounds great, because it doesn't, doesn't sound good at all. I just want to get that out there. I do not support the North Korean regime. Good. This is called North Korea Undercover Inside the World's Most Secret State by John Sweeney. Um, this is actually quite a modern book. It's actually got um, Kim Jong-un, the current leader of North Korea, whereas most books that I've read have been under the uh, regime of uh, Kim Jong-il, who was his father and predecessor to the North Korean... Th not throne. It's not a king. The previous leader. Okay, this one has got the current leader, so it's it's a recent book. I haven't read anything that recent, I don't think. North Korea is a tyranny like no other. It is Macbeth with nuclear weapons. For three generations, the Kim family have ruled by fear, fabrication, and relentless propaganda. The people are told their home is the greatest nation on earth. Do they believe it? Who can say? Big Brother is always watching. Posing as a university professor, award-winning BBC journalist John Sweeney travelled undercover to gain access to the world's most secret state. Drawing on his experiences and his extensive interviews with defectors, commentators and key witnesses, North Korea Undercover pulls back the curtain, providing a rare insight into life there today and addressing important questions about the regime's uncertain future. I believe there was a documentary called North Korea Undercover by the same guy, because it was made by BBC, I think it was Panorama, and I believe this must be the book about that experience, so I am really, really interested in reading this. This book is called a Kim Jong-il production. This is obviously set in a time when Kim Jong-il was the leader. Um, he's now obviously been succeeded by his son. Um, and this one is basically about how much Kim Jong-il used to love, um, like, the Western world's films. So someone who ran a communist state and believed that capitalism was the root of all evil, he sure did like his capitalist films. Before becoming the world's most notorious dictator, Kim Jong-il ran North Korea's Ministry for Propaganda. He conceived, produced, and wrote every film made in the country, but grew frustrated by how badly they compared to his beloved Hollywood blockbusters. As he jealously eyed his enemy South Korea's thriving film industry, he hit upon the perfect solution, order the kidnapping of its most famous actress and her ex-husband, its most acclaimed director. Um, so basically, um, Kim Jong-il really liked South Korean films, so he kidnapped a South Korean actress and her ex-husband, who was their most well-known director. That actually happened. That's a real thing. That's why I'm so into it, because it's just, you wouldn't believe that this is happening in the world. Again, I'm really excited. I don't know if they escaped. I don't know anything about that story. I have heard about it, but I didn't, I don't know anything to do with it. Big fish, little fish, North Korea. Not gonna do that. And finally, I got this, which is The Real North Korea, Life and Politics in a Foul Stalinist Utopia by Andrei Lankov. Um, this is fully updated and revised, you'll be glad to know. I believe this is more of a factual kind of book, um, talking about how the country was sort of founded after the Korean War, um, how the regime was founded under Kim Il-sung, who was the original leader, who's still known as the Eternal Leader. Um, he's still, his dead body, he died in like 1991, 92, uh, no, 94, I think it was, and his dead body is still in a mausoleum and people still have to pay their respects to his dead body because they have to perceive him as a god. Um, so I believe it goes from like sort of the beginning to like present day. Um, so this, like I said, this is more of a factual one, this is more like non-entertainment um, not that these should be considered entertainment. I, I have a weird fixation with North Korea and I really want to get into perhaps working out how I can help the people of North Korea. Don't know how I can without getting kidnapped, but this is more sort of just background research. So that is the end of the haul. I'm sorry this video was so long. I, I, when I get talking about North Korea, um, I'm all over the place. I will just chat for hours. I hope this video was fun and enjoyable, sort of just telling you what I bought. But anyway, if you did like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to Boxes of Foxes. Um, I also have a new gaming channel, which you can find there. Uh, it's called Birdie Boots, if you don't want to click on the annotation or if you're on mobile. And I will see you guys very soon. And by very soon, I mean... I don't know.